transformation techniques. Different techniques are used to introduce vectors into plant cells. Uptake of foreign DNA by plant cells is called transformation and these techniques are known as transformation techniques. Transformation techniques can be grouped into two categories. The first is agrobacterium mediated transformation. Agrobacterium tumefaciens is a widespread bacterium which infects plants and forms crown galls. It also has an ability to integrate new genetic material also known as tDNA or transfer DNA into the plants. TI plasmid that is the tumor inducing plasmid is used in this technique. TI plasmid contains functional regions such as tDNA Vir region which regulates or directs the transfer of tDNA into the plant cell. TI plasmid either co-integrated or binary containing transgene is introduced into agrobacterium. Agrobacterium is then co-cultured with plant cells to be transformed for about two days. During the two days, the tDNA becomes integrated into the plant genome and transgene gets expressed. Such transformed cells become resistant to antibiotic canamycin. Canamycin allows only transformed plant cells to divide. The second category of transformation techniques is direct gene transfer. Introduction of DNA into plant cells without the involvement of a biological agent such as agrobacterium and leading to stable transformation is known as direct gene transfer. The spontaneous uptake of DNA by plant cells is quite low. Therefore, different chemical and physical treatments are employed to facilitate the entry of DNA into plant cells. Let us learn different methods used for direct gene transfers. The first method is a chemical method. Plant protoplasts are suspended in a transformation medium rich in magnesium-2 ions. A linearized plasmid DNA containing the gene construct is added to the protoplast suspension. Following which BEG is added and pH is adjusted about 8. Treated protoplasts are then cultured where the regeneration take place and the transformed cells are selected. The PEG method is used to produce transformed cells in tobacco plants. The second method is electroporation. Plant protoplasts are suspended in a suitable ionic solution containing linearized plasmid DNA exposed to high voltage electrical pulses for very brief periods. Protoplasts are then cultured to obtain cell colonies and plants. Electroporation has been used to produce stably transformed plants in species such as tobacco, petunia, maize, rice, wheat, etc. The third method is the particle gun method also known as the biolistic or ballistic method of DNA. In this method, one to two micrometer tungsten or gold particles 
coated with the DNA to be used for transformation are accelerated to velocities which enable their entry into plant cells. Particle acceleration is carried out with the help of a device which accelerates particles either by using pressurized helium gas or by the electrostatic energy released by a droplet of water exposed to high voltage. Particle gun method has been used to produce stable gene transfers in cotton, maize, rice, sorghum, soybean, sugarcane, tobacco, wheat, papaya, poplar, etc. But two examples of practically useful gene transfers are transfer of cry gene from Bacillus thuringiensis into maize for resistance to European corn borer and that of bar gene in rice for resistance to phosphonothricin, a herbicide. The fifth method is called microinjection in which the DNA solution is injected directly inside the cell using capillary glass micropipettes with the help of micro manipulators of a micro injection assembly. The process of micro injection is technically in demand and at the same time it's very time consuming. Around 40 to 50 protoplasts can be micro injected in one hour. Successful transformation of plant cells by microinjection has been achieved in tobacco, alfalfa and brassica species. The transformation frequencies range between 14 and 66 percent. The sixth method is called fiber mediated DNA delivery in which suspension of plant cells is first mixed with a plasmid containing gene construct and silicon fibers. The mixture is then vertexed and the cells are assayed for successful transformation. The silicon carbide fibers are 0 0.6 micrometer in diameter and 10 to 80 micrometer in length. This method was successful with maize and tobacco, but it is still not known if the transformation resulted in stable integration of transgene. The next method is called laser-induced DNA delivery. In this method, laser punctures transient holes in the cell membrane through which DNA may enter the cell cytoplasm. Lasers have been used to deliver DNA into plant cells, but there is no information on stable integration. DNA delivery via growing pollen tube is another method used for direct gene transfer. In this method, stigma of a flower is cut off some time after pollination and the DNA solution is applied onto the cut surface. Usually integration occurs in the nuclear genome and it always takes place at random sites. Only exceptionally in the chloroplast genome. One to several integrations may occur in the same nucleus. The confirmation of transgene integration and analysis of its functions is carried out by several approaches such as southern hybridization. In this process, the DNA is extracted from a transgenic individual and is digested with suitable restriction enzyme. Then, DNA is subjected to agarose gel electrophoresis. Fragments of DNA are denatured into single-stranded form by an alkali treatment and are then transferred onto a nitrocellulose filter membrane. 
Nitrocellulose membrane is then baked at 80 degrees Celsius and the band of DNA is immobilized on the membrane. The membrane is then placed in a solution containing probe. A probe is the DNA molecule which is used to detect and identify the DNA fragment or transgene that is complementary to the probe. A probe will always have base sequences complementary to the DNA fragment to be identified. 